So tell them who you are and what you do. Um, my name is Nine Lives. I primarily make music and just like, you know, different types of music, but um, I also edit videos and I make cover art sometimes. So I do that on the side, kind of. Bet. So how long have you been doing so? Um, oh, <laughs> uh, so I've been making music with like bands and other people since I was like 13, maybe 14. Um, but I've been doing my independent shit for probably about two years now. Oh shit, so how's that been? What's that been like? Um, <laughs> the independent shit, like, it's cool. Like, obviously, I love music. It's like the most important thing to me, literally in the whole world. But it also has like, you know, discouraging moments, kind of like, yeah. sometimes I sit there, you know, and I'm just like, oh shit, like, why am I doing this? But then I always snap out of it, but you know. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. So what made you start like doing this creative shit? Um, well, I started like like I said, I started pretty young. Like um when I first joined my band, um yeah. I think the main reason was just because I love like I, I find it really hard to express myself sometimes and like I feel like music really does help that shit, even though it's mm -hmm. kinda corny, it's true. <laughs> yeah, I feel you completely and I like one hundred percent agree. So would you say like music is an emotional release for you? A hundred percent, yeah. Like I literally that shit got me through not just making music, but also just listening to music. Like right. literally got me through everything, bro. Like all my trauma, like I just released that shit and it's it's good. Facts. <laughs> I feel you on that one one hundred percent. Good. I'm glad you have that too then. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> so like you said that you started joining bands and stuff like at a young age. Mm -hmm. So when would you say you started to take this like seriously? Shit. So uh, like the bands, um, it wasn't that I didn't really take them seriously. It was more like I was a literal kid. You know, I was like 14 right. years old. You know, what I mean, like, yeah, I didn't know. Like, you didn't how know to what to do. do. Seriously. Yeah. Like, right. I don't know. But um like i guess i started taking it as a career like i would make it a career now which was well in when i did my independent music like two years ago like um i started uh taking it really seriously because when i was doing it by myself it was more like i have no option other than to make it right now like i can't right. fuck up because it's just me you know what i mean like i have right. no one backing me up kind of so i feel you i'm 100 percent yeah damn so like do you want to like speak more in depth about that like what it's about like what? what it's like just being you and you knowing like i have to do this like because it's literally just me yeah i mean like um hmm. let me let this join hold up <laughs> you're good <laughs> take your time uh thank you you're welcome um, Sometimes I gotta think, I'm like, wait, so, <laughs> but, uh, I guess, I don't know, like, I, when I, when I do it by myself, like, I always, obviously, I don't produce by myself, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't even mix my own shit, like, you know what I mean, so, yeah. I just, when I say do it by myself, it's more like, I don't, I don't have anyone, like, cause I don't know, I can always find beats, I can always find mixing, right. but I could never find someone who, like, matches my style, like, exactly, obviously, so, yeah. I completely you know, understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes, especially like doing it by myself, like and not producing, is kind of hard sometimes because I have visions, and then it's really hard to execute them sometimes without the right kind of beat. You know what I mean? Yes, one hundred percent, definitely. Mm -hmm. I know how that feels like all the way. Yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people understand that shit. Like it's not oh, yeah. annoying. I think that's part of the reason why I started producing because I was like, "What the fuck? I can't find any beats." Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Literally. I fuck with that. Right. So, fuck, I had a question. It was a good question. Hold on, wait. Oh! So, what would you, where do you find support from? Like, who's your support system? And, like, how do you feel about them? <laughs> my support system, number one, my boyfriend, to be real, because Aww. he's, he's, <laughs> he's, like, literally, I don't know, like, He's the one who's like, he kind of motivates me, bro. Like, like, I don't know. Like, if I have a show and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm trying to go to that. Like, he'll be like, nah, you gotta go. Like, you have to go. And I'm like, facts, okay. 
So definitely my boyfriend, like number one. But then I also have my team, like um, no. Nah, so yeah, my boyfriend number one. Mm -hmm. and then also my team, like lazy B roll, um, my boy Lane, um, like like my team, you know, like the yes. people who I fucking make music with. Like right. they're the ones who you know support me, and without them, I wouldn't even be motivated to be real. Like damn, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> so yeah. like, how did you meet all of them? Well, um, I met my boyfriend actually like last year, um, last summer, um, but uh, so we met because I was friends with Lazy just from like mutual friends because we live around each other. So I met him through mutual friends, and then he introduced me to my boyfriend like um, not this summer but the summer before that. Mm -hmm. So then ever since I met my boyfriend and Lazy, I started being able to meet like B roll. Um, my boy Lane, I then knew him, but um. Like, I met a bunch of people through Lazy, definitely, and my boyfriend. Right. Okay, okay. That's fucking awesome. So, I know B-Roll, like, and Lazy and all of them, they, like, did a show together or whatever. Were you there with them? Yeah, I, I literally, I don't think any of us have done a show without each other. Before. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> so, what's it like performing? Oh, my God. Like, it's literally, every time I perform... I can't like rest because I just want to fucking perform again bro like oh, wow. literally performing for me is like it's like the only thing that makes me feel like powerful I guess like you know what I mean yeah that's fucking awesome <laughs> and it looks so fun so like what was your first performance like oh my god my first performance like <laughs> my first performance when I was younger in, in a bunch of bands um mm -hmm. it was actually at this like local venue and it um the venue was kind of like kind of big like for you know someone who didn't wasn't in you know, an established band or anything but and it was um it was literally just um me and my band and then we had like 10 or 15 people in the crowd and that shit was like it was fire like because it was the first time i got that feeling of performing mm -hmm. so um even though there was only like 10 or 15 people i literally was just like going off like like right. singing mad loud you know hype shit like that right Mm -hmm. that's that's fucking awesome <laughs> thank you you're welcome so like how many times have you performed and how when was your wait fuck like what year <laughs> was your first performance and how many um, times have you performed since then shit okay my first performance um like my first official performance was 2017 mm -hmm. and then um oh wait no that's a lie my first performance was 2015 Ooh. And then after that, I stopped for about two years. And then I started performing more. And since then, I've probably performed, like, like I want to say, like, 30 times. Like, not too much, but not, like, I've definitely performed a good amount. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's fucking awesome. So it's like you kind of, like, got the feel of it. Yeah, exactly. Like, you like, know I'm, what you like to do when you go on stage mm -hmm. and shit. That's exactly. awesome. Exactly. That's fucking awesome. So like, oh shit, I forgot the question. God damn. <laughs> no. It's okay, girl, I feel you. Damn, this shit always happens. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like the All questions, the literally, it's like the questions that I fucking like freestyle, I forget. <laughs> damn, hold on, let me think. What was I You're gonna good. So, um, a long time ago I was watching like, um, I think it was a Lil Peep interview and there was a I literally sit up and watch like artists that I love like I watch their interviews all the mm -hmm. time and it's Bam. rare that people <laughs> ask this question but people ask them about like their first performance or whatever and then I heard like Lil Peep he said that his first performance was a small crowd but he enjoyed it as well because like he said the energy of the room it was just like better like he could feel mm -hmm. it so like do you agree yeah yeah i definitely agree with that because i feel like when you're obviously i haven't performed in no stadium or like anything right. like huge like that but i feel like because when i when i'm performing and it's a small crowd i can look at everyone's face i can like see how everyone's reacting but right. like the energy definitely just shows you know and like if you're in like some big st um stadium or some shit like you can't really you can obviously know the energy by like sharing and shit like that but right. like um I don't know, you can't look people in their faces and shit and, like, see what they're actually feeling when you sing and all that. Right. So it's, like, more of a connection. 
exactly and i think that's what he meant but like i don't know i guess we'll never know for sure but that's fucking awesome though <laughs> okay let me get this spreadsheet back out so i can um, how long did it take you to progress to where you are now like what was the process like getting to where you are now um uh see where i am now like i feel like i'm still not at my complete potential mm -hmm. but i'm getting there like because right. when i look at my progression i don't really look at like numbers or like right. shit like that i kind of just look at like how your growth I as a music. person right exactly yeah like and like your like, growth in your craft mm -hmm. exactly literally like when i because when i first started like i said i wasn't thinking like oh this is gonna be my career like i i had dreams and i right. wanted it to be but i didn't think it was possible right. as sad as that sounds but like um now that i i think the biggest part of my progression was just realizing like oh shit like this is actually gonna be your life like no right. matter what Mm -hmm. It's fucking awesome. So, like, back to the shows, because this was what I was trying to ask, like, before, but I forgot. So, mm -hmm. for your first show or whatever, like, how did you even get in the flow to be able to, like, get booked for shows? Like, what did you do to be able to perform? And what do um, you do now to be able to perform? Um. So, when I, when I first started, it was because, um... All the see like i said the bands i was in they um like the guitarist he mm -hmm. he he had a lot of local plugins like um we live in a small ass state um which is rhode island like the smallest state right so like um everyone literally like knows everyone so if you're trying to perform you just like ask someone like oh who do you know who works at a music venue and literally we got through with word of mouth like literally and then this honestly the same now because I've only ever performed in my state, in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know, like, definitely just word of mouth. Like, people will say, oh, like, I have a venue. Are you trying to perform? Because they've seen me on Instagram or whatever. And I'll just be like, yeah. And then it'll happen. Okay, okay. So, like, what, um, do you have connections out of state? Um, I would say in New York, like, I low-key have friends there and shit. But, mm -hmm. um, I don't really have, like... I don't really have connects like venue connects like that so right. i would say nah but like artist connects sure but right and so networking wise like how do you how do you go about doing that uh like, for me i've always had like people. a weird relationship with networking because like um like people like you like i fuck with people like underground haven where Thank it's you. like genuine you know what i mean like right. like i'll hit you up and like you'll be like oh i fuck with that i'm gonna repost it you know what i mean right. like but there's mad like like i don't really respond to like promoters and shit right. who are like like weird because i don't know it's all just like i like genuine interaction you know like right. i like talking to people and like getting a real opinion and like fucking so, same <laughs> literally, literally. Like, i know you feel me literally because you literally. fucking do it you that know? was my so. whole fucking problem like when i was like <laughs> yes when i was like just like being i used to do edits on instagram i tried to do <laughs> video edits but i was like eh. and then i started yeah. doing music and my biggest fucking problem was i could never find people who were into the stuff that I was into, people who would give me genuine feedback or people who even understood my art. So I was like, fuck right. it, I'm gonna make my own shit. Facts. And look where you are now. Right. Oh, <laughs> Facts. So but, cool. Like, thank exactly, you. Like, I don't know. Like, networking to me is like, like, to me when I hear networking, I think of like hitting up people you don't know and being right. like, oh repost my song and like right. i don't know like that's just it's i don't mind like i don't judge people for doing that because that's like definitely a hustle but like for me it's just i don't know i've always felt kind of weird doing that but i don't know yeah <laughs> i'm not gonna lie like still to this day that's how i got most of my followers and that's how i met most of the people who i'm at because it's like mm -hmm. i was like um at first i was just like dming and like self-promoting on random people po random people's posts and then i started to mm -hmm. like get followers from that shit and then i started to interact with them but my idea of networking is like 
creating like genuine friendships and connections with people Mm -hmm. because people are more willing to like help you out whenever you guys have like a genuine relationship you know what i'm saying because i'm like you know that already like i i know you know that most definitely yeah like like that's what i mean like what like that kind of networking that's like i fuck with that you know like i definitely say with that it's like it's really fire to like hit people up who you fuck with and talk to them and shit but like i I don't know like um and like what you're doing like it's genuine you know like even if you're promoing or even if you're hitting people up like they'll go to your page and be like oh okay but this person actually like talks to people and like isn't just like a ghost besides that shit you know what i mean like not copying and pasting like messages but you're actually like (laughs) talking to people (laughs) right that's fucking awesome i still feel weird doing that shit sometimes too like i'd be like damn i look like a fucking crackhead in these people's nah. comments bro. <laughs> nah i i i think people can recognize like that you're not some because you're not like money hungry it's not like you're mm. promoting and being like oh give me money for this shit like right. like I don't know. you know what i mean like you're doing Sucks. it for good reason yeah i feel you i feel you thank you like thank you so much <laughs> queen oh my god i know you I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you learn did you have a teacher or were you like self-taught um i was self-taught for the most part but um my friend josh who i actually met like in the hospital <laughs> um he fucking like uh taught me pretty much mad shit i know like he when i first started he would be like oh like you have to do ad libs and you have to like record multiple layers to your music and i was like bitch i had no fucking idea i had to do that shit. Like, you know like he taught me like the basics that i like like no one else would teach me because they thought i would already know but right. i didn't you know yeah so definitely, yeah definitely <laughs> damn so like um you said his name was josh mm-hmm. is he are you guys still like in contact now oh yeah yeah he mixes like 99% of my music for me actually oh, like on awesome. Instagram his name's Rip Josh R.I.P. Josh oh that's fucking awesome yeah yeah okay that's <laughs> awesome but so what is it like so like having a team because I know like a lot of the artists that I meet um they don't necessarily have a team or a support system at all so like what is it like having a team like Speak on the pros and the cons of having a team. But, okay. Um, so, I would say... Um, I'll start with the cons, because there's less cons, so I'll just get those out of the way. Right. But I think the only thing that's, like, kind of bad about... Not bad, but, like, annoying about having a team is, like, people associate you all the time to the point where, like, if someone... Like, if you don't drop a song with someone, people will be like, oh, like, is there beef? Like, just right. weird shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, right. it's, like, too much associating. But at the same time, like, all the pros, there's so many pros, like, because my team is people that I know in real life, you know, like, a right. lot of people don't have that privilege, and I'm very lucky. Right. Um, but it's, like, it's definitely, like, for me, it's really, it's really helpful to make music when you're surrounded by people who, like, love your sound. Like, right. if I'm... If I'm sitting there and, like, making a song and, like, questioning it, I, I won't even drop it. But, like, when I have, like, my friends who I can send them shit to, they'll be like, oh, like, yeah, that's fire. And then it'll just, like, give me that extra push. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's, it's, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. I love them. Aw. Must be fucking <laughs> nice. What you said? I said must be fucking nice. Aw. Cool. Where do you live? I live in bitch ass South Carolina and I'm not even from here, bro. I'm from St. Louis and it's like I don't get love here or there. Mm, <laughs> but it's cool. Head. It's like I get love everywhere else but here, but I'm straight. I'm Literally. Bro, that sucks. I Facts. Damn. If you if you ever get the chance, you should like come fucking visit us, bro. That would be fun. I really do want mm-hmm. to. I'm supposed to be traveling more also, so I'll definitely look into that. Yeah, hell yeah. After fucking this corona shit is over. Oh, yeah. Facts. Because Rona got everything fucked up. Mm-hmm. Too much shit. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> um, so what was it like having, you know, Josh and whoever else teach you? Like, what would you say about that? Like, do you think it... Of course it was more helpful, but... 
Mm-hmm. Do you think he would have been able to progress as much if you were, let's say, self-taught? Um, honestly, honestly, like, I would have been able to eventually, like, I would have just looked shit up on my own in the end of the day or whatever, mm-hmm. but it definitely gave me that boost because when I first started music, I could focus more on, like, the art and the actual, like, the good part about it other than the technical side because I already knew it. Right. But, um because I know that's what a lot of people struggle with. Like, when they first start music, like, they don't really have people to help them. So they just kind of, like, do what they think they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they kind of, like, focus on the mixing and all that shit more. So it kinda must be hard for them, but, right. yeah. Yeah. I've definitely been very lucky, you know. Facts. And it's awesome that you, like, recognize that. Oh, yeah, and definitely. You're, like, hella humble about it also. That's cool as hell. <laughs> But, fuck, do you have any goals for your music career? Um, I would say my number one goal, besides the obvious shit, which is, like, inspiration and, mm-hmm. like, all that shit, like, I would say my number one goal is to be able to make a steady income and not have to work no fucking job because I hate Same. fucking working, bro. <laughs> like, Same. that shit sucks. Like, that drains my shit. Like, ugh, Literally. it's awful. And it's, like, so fucking depressing, like, waking up and you're like, damn, bro, like, I gotta go to fucking work. Yep. Yeah. Back. it feels like your day's wasted it's not annoying really like for real so how do you feel about music on a spiritual level um with i feel like with listening to music and making music um they're two different aspects because mm-hmm. when i'm when i'm making music spiritually um it definitely like i said before it definitely helps me like release my trauma and like all that kind of shit without right. you know like i don't know it's just it's like a healthy medium right. for that shit. yeah like but um and listening to music has always been such, like, an important spiritual thing to me because, like, if I think about it, like, there's certain music I can listen to and, like, feel a feeling that I've never felt, you know? Like, I can't feel that any other way except Literally. that specific music. Yeah, and, like, right. fucking, um, and also, like, music, like, if I want to, like, go in the past, like, I can just listen to music and it'll take me there. You know, literally like, <laughs> on god i'm so happy somebody finally said that bro like you're no, you're literally yes. saying shit that i try to say all the time but i don't know how to put oh. it into words oh yes i'm, I'm so happy pleased. you feel me yes like i feel you 100 percent. everything that you said so far i feel mm-hmm. bro, I that's fucking that. awesome <laughs> and then like also like um so, do you think music has, like, changed you as a person? And if so, do you think it's been for the better? I feel like, like, obviously, like, from observing you, it's changed you, like, for the better. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, I would agree with that shit. Because, like, I don't know. I can't speak for myself. Like, fame is some shit that, like, um, like changes everyone. And they have no idea that it would change them like that. Right. So, like, obviously, I'm not famous yet or anything. So, right. um, when I, like, I can't speak for myself then. But I can, I'm, like... I'm pretty much like 99% positive that it's always just gonna better me like I cannot see a world where I'm like like a worse person because of my music and shit because it just makes me so happy you know what I mean like I just couldn't see that shit but like I like it's kind of unexpected too like because most people who are famous they don't know they don't know how they were gonna act you know like five years ago you know so right and then it's like some people I'm like i feel like for some people like they kind of you kind of know like when you're like special or whatever just like you know like you Mm -hmm. wake up one day and like you know what you're gonna do or whatever you can kind of feel it but you never know like how you're going to act because of it you feel me exactly yeah most definitely like i'm pretty sure playboy cardi like he probably knew like he was different and he was like fuck but he never knew like he was gonna end up acting the way he act not saying like he's a bad person (laughs) or anything because i don't know him but yeah. yeah. No, I feel you. I know what you mean. So, what do you think you would be doing right now, today, if you weren't making music? <laughs> um, I would probably just be, like, depressed in college or some shit. <laughs> like, Facts. like, I'm literally, yeah. I'm literally in college. Like, I take, like, three classes, but that shit's so slight to me because, like, I take, um, like, film class and shit. Like, right. nothing... So, like, I would probably just be, like, pursuing some bullshit career that I don't really like or some shit. Like, right. I don't know. I think I think people who have their passion as, like, a socially acceptable thing are really, like, lucky. Mm-hmm. Because, like, 
think about it like if someone's like from their from the day they were born like oh i'm so passionate about being a doctor literally. like they can go be a doctor you know like literally they can go be a doctor like right. it's way harder with like art and shit like that right. i feel like creativity for some odd reason like everybody thinks like it's not socially acceptable and it's like they think like it's a joke like they think they take it as like a hobby and my parents were like that for a long ass time like i took Mm -hmm. you know i took like hella classes to be a fucking nurse or whatever and Mm -hmm. it's like i was good at it or whatever because it's not hard but it's like working in the hospital and like seeing all of that shit like since i was Mm -hmm. a jit i knew that's not what i wanted to fucking do so like yeah doing that it depressed me and i was like bro like i don't want to do this shit i was like hold on i told my mom i was like bro we gotta we gotta figure something out because this this i don't like this (laughs) i feel you like because i'm fucking like like i oh my god because like if i worked in a hospital like you or some shit Mm -hmm. like oh my god because that shit like i'm an empath and like i'll say i'll literally you are, yeah. Yes. I, I low key, I always can low key tell, but I don't want to tell. Right. Because, <laughs> um, like, what if I'm wrong? I look dumb, but no, I could definitely tell. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, it, like, so I know, you know what I mean. Like, Literally. If I was at a hospital, I would, be, every person I would look at, I'd be like, oh my God, it would ruin my day. Because that was literally <laughs> fucking me. Oh my God. I would yep. literally, like, skip days, like, weeks of work, and then I would go back, and one of my fucking patients would be dead. And then the last time I went, there was this lady. And I forgot her name, but she was like, I didn't even know her name from the beginning. I just used to call her grandma because that's what she told me to call her. And she was so sweet. Every time I, she had dementia or whatever, so she, like, she was a little bit loopy. But every time I would talk to her, she was always so sweet to me. She would call me her granddaughter. And she would, um, she was, like, in, like, her own little world. But she was always just so sweet to me. And it's like, even though I knew, like, she didn't really, like, understand what she was doing, I knew she was reacting to me based off of my energy. And she was so sweet. And when I went back and she passed away, I was like, fuck this. I was like, Bro, literally, I quit. Literally, I did. I was like, I can't take this anymore. I was like, I'm done. And then after that, they were like, they kept calling me. They were like, hey, we need you to come in. We need you to come in. We need you to come in. I'm like, uh, fuck y'all. Y'all are mean. We're like, yo, my were. grandma died. What's wrong with y'all? Oh, God. Like, I was like, fuck no, I can't take this anymore. And then oh, it's God. like seeing how, like, all the other, like, nurses, like, treat those people. It also Mm kind of pissed me off because, like, they don't talk about this, but people in the, like, healthcare field altogether are very neglectful. A lot of them are very neglectful of their patients. They're strictly just there for the fucking money, and it sucks. That's part of the reason why I went into nursing. And I feel like I'm going to continue, but I'm also going to continue with the creative side of things. I'm hoping, Mm -hmm. like, this creative shit picks up so I can focus on this more, but, yeah. Yeah. That shit. That's wow. That's crazy, bro. Like, yeah. Because I. That's so cool. Because like, I feel like I've thought before. Because my grandma is actually um a nurse. Uh huh. So um she she's actually told me shit about that too. She'll like tell me stories of like people being fucked up to elderly people, and yes. I'm like, bro, what's like what's wrong with you people? I like, don't what the fuck? know. People are just fucking evil, bro. I literally like what? Like, oh, yeah. man, that's crazy. I'm I sorry see. that you have to go through that shit. It's all right. I just, I just, like, pray about it. And I'm like, yeah, that type of shit, you don't get away with that type of shit. That energy always comes back to you, no matter what. Exactly. Exactly. Literally. Nobody fucking gets it, but they will. Yep, exactly. Right. And then they'll feel like shit. <laughs> right. And then they'll be sitting there wondering, like, why is all this stuff happening to me? It's karma. <laughs> Literally. That's Facts. what I'm saying. But fucking, um, hold on. Do you want to blah, 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 if you weren't making music today? Do you, do you do anything else creative? You spoke about, like, um, film. So, like, what's mm-hmm. that like? Honestly, like, I just started getting to that shit, like, right. the beginning of this year. Like, um, because how, what was going on was I, um, I really wanted a music video, bro, because, like, I... I love music videos and like right. I love visuals. Same. Like I just fuck with visuals, you know. Like yeah, right. you know because you edit, you know. Right. I mean? right. And I you edit. sit up. Do you do this? I literally will like sit up and like watch like hours and hours and yep. hours of music videos. Just yes. like literally, just like because you know what I'm trying to say. Because they're just awesome. I, yes. Exactly. Like, it's, yeah. It gives a whole different thing to the the song. You know. Right. What I mean? like, it's 
fire. Right, like, but, the song could be about shooting niggas, but the video could be, like, them in the woods fucking <laughs> fighting aliens or Fox. some shit, and it would be so cool. Yeah. Are you, exactly like, it, are you doing film because you want to create your own music video? Yeah, exactly. That's right. What, like, that's what I was about to say. Like, um, I started because I, I realized, like, how much I wanted a music video because I had so many ideas or whatever. Right. But um, no one around me could really execute them the way I right. wanted them to. So, like, I just started doing it. I was like, fuck it. Like, I'm going to record on my iPhone. I'm going to make a video. Like, what's the worst that could happen? Literally. And then it turned out fire. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to do this a lot then. So since then, I've made, like, five videos. That's fucking awesome. And I'm so happy for you. Thank you. You're welcome. I have I hope you continue with it. I really do cuz that's awesome. Mhm. Definitely cuz like but. it gives it's cool when you like do multiple creative things cuz then right. like I don't know, sometimes I get burnt out from music, so I'll go over to editing, you know what I mean? Literally. Like, cool. Literally. I tell people the same shit. So I know exactly what you're saying. Mhm. I know you do. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Uh, hold on. Damn, I fucking lost my question. <laughs> oh shit, that's a pattern. Literally. Sorry. Do you like um? Have you ever thought about you know like making clothes or like what else could you do? Like I've. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> you good? I've definitely like thought about making clothes. Like I have visions and shit for clothes, but I right. feel like. If I'm gonna do that, it's gonna be later on, just because um, I'm kind of more focused on music right now. So I don't know, like, definitely thought about it, but not pursuing it as of now. But I definitely want to in the future. I feel you. I feel you. And that's fucking awesome. So, like, what kinds of clothes would you make? Like, would it be like DIY, or do you think it would be more so like, um, you know, like screen printing and heat presses, mm -hmm. or do you think it would be like both? I think, oh, fuck, like, I want to say it would be both because, like, DIY shit, that's just, like, that's so time-consuming and, like, right. people, like, people don't want to pay a lot of money even though it takes mad work right. to, like, you know, do some shit. So, I feel like I might start off with, like, screen printing shit just to, like, get myself up there if right. I did this and then work on DIY shit and make it, like, some exclusive shit, you know what I mean? Right. Bro, you just gave me an idea, I'm not gonna lie. Oh. <laughs> Cause Good. I was like thinking about doing it like backwards. I was gonna do DIY yeah. and then like build up to the screen printing because it's like I don't know. Cause I, I don't fucking know. I'll explain like later, but yeah. <laughs> I feel you though. And so you were just speaking about like being an empath or whatever. And so me, since I'm an empath, I know I'm like hella like I am all over the place. So I'm not gonna cap, but I'm also like very energetically sensitive. And I'm, like, yeah. very, like, very, like, protective over my energy. Mm -hmm. Are you the same way? And, like, how does that affect you, like, in the creative industry? Um, It's definitely, like, I, I completely know what you mean. Like, yeah. I, I, I'm very sensitive to, like, like, I'm just a very sensitive person, but I try not to show it, really. Right. Like, like, um, so, I don't know, like, and my own energy, like, if if I if I start to see that someone's like about to hurt me or like trying to be a snake kind of like I'll just I'm usually give the benefit of the doubt which is a bad thing Same. like especially yeah exactly like especially with like music because like people will literally be friends with you for no reason other than to like get your followers or whatever your clout. but like I don't know like when I start to realize that shit it's it's something I need to work on because I do give the benefit of the doubt way too often Right. And I feel like, like, if I, um, if I'm, st if I'm gonna, like, get up in the industry and shit like that, I really need to work on that shit. Like, yeah. it's, yeah, you know I, what I mean. Yeah, I've been working on the same shit because, like, my, me giving people the benefit of the doubt has gotten me in, like, so many, like, shitty ass fucking problems. Mm -hmm. And same. I always, like, sit back and I'm like, if I would have just, like, if I would have just <laughs> listened to my first mind. I would have mm -hmm. been okay. Literally. Facts. And then also, like, you were speaking about how people in the music industry, like, you need to, you can't be willing to give everybody the benefit of the doubt because 
and the creative not even just the create like music industry the creative industry all together people are snakes like people do not care about you they care about money and i don't think people Mm -hmm. talk about that enough oh yeah it's like they always make it look like it's sunshine and rainbows and it's not (laughs) exactly like people like especially in like la and like shit like that like people literally like oh my god it's 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 like as a person who's like you know i guess not a terrible person it's like it's so hard to watch people just fuck each other over so much and like it's such a common thing you know it's it's sad facts i understand it's like why is this shit normalized exactly literally yeah that's another reason why i was like let me start the haven because i'm like if this shit does pick up traction when it does i'm speaking it into existence i could help other artists like come up and provide resources for them because bruh yeah that'd be fire that should definitely be like your end goal bro because like you're you're on such a good path how long have you been doing this well i started the haven uh roughly five to six months ago but i took a break for like i took like a three and a half yeah like three and a half month break so i've really only been doing this shit for like let's say like three and a half months that's insane you're doing so fucking good for like that short amount of time bro what the Thank fuck you. like it's crazy you Thanks feel like i don't know i just i feel like i don't i literally don't say this to a lot of people bro like i feel like you're actually like a real ass person who's really gonna fucking do something because when i think about it like no one else is doing this shit you know what i mean like it's right. not like everyone else has bad intentions like i don't right. know it's gonna take off so soon bro thank you so much and i feel the same way about like you and like b-roll and like lazy like i haven't met all of you but i've only like been able to experience so far like you three like y'all's energy Mm -hmm. and it's like i'm i've been pretty busy as of recently so i have i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna sit here and say i listen to you guys' music 24 7 because i haven't been able to but like from what i do hear and like from what i do feel and like from how i've like when i interact with you guys Y'all are gonna go up. I don't fucking know when, but I, f- I feel like it's soon. I really do feel like it's soon, but y'all are definitely gonna go up. And it's Thanks, like, girl. you're welcome. But I'm just like, I'm honestly just being honest. Like, I can't. There's, yeah. there's certain people who I meet, and it's like you can just feel it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I feel that. Like, some people, right. like, it's like different energy you just get from them. You're like, okay, right. this is, you know. It's I like, feel you. Y'all have so much fucking it's like this drive, like this fucking potential. And then it's like it's like all of you together, like you all have very distinct like energies about you. But like when y'all are together, like like as a collective, it just mm-hmm. yeah. It feels good. Thank like that's you. a good ass energy. I fuck with it. <laughs> good, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I know, I, don't, I never know how to take compliments. I'm like, yeah, thank you. Like, nigga, me too. I be doing the same <laughs> shit. Like, I used to be so awkward. Like, I still am. I'm trying to, like, break out of it. But, like, mm-hmm, me too. motherfuckers would be like, oh, my gosh. Like, you're doing so good at this. And I'm like, like, in the back of my head. Because I used to get, like, bullied or whatever. So, like, whenever people, yeah. like, give me compliments, I'm like, are you trying to be funny? Like, in the back of my head. Oh, like, no. <laughs> back, like, wait, oh, are God. you serious? Or are you being, like, a dickhead? You being sarcastic, yes. aren't you? Right. Oh my god, I feel you. It's either that or it's like y'all want something from me, bro. I don't Literally, trust yep. it. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it be, bro. Spoke about being discouraged or whatever. So like how did you combat those negative feelings and decide to continue? And like what made you decide to continue? Um, to be real, there's like I would say the two main things that like help me break that discouraging like those discouraging thoughts are Mm -hmm. performing number one because whenever I perform I always feel like okay this is about to be my life it's always performing but then um since COVID um it's been kind of hard because obviously I can't really perform that much so right um I've just been using like honestly just like manifestation obviously like telling myself like I'm good and all that shit and like just meditation like it always it always helps with like getting myself back out there right definitely because like i feel like for a lot of us for something like 2020 has been hell yeah because it's Mm -hmm. like everybody is so used to like you know living our lives doing what the fuck we want to do so it's like this year has been hella hard to adjust but i feel like 
I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I don't want to sound like crazy saying this. But it's like, I feel like for some people, everything happens for a reason. I feel like, well, everything happens for a reason for everybody. But I feel like for some people, yeah. this corona shit was kind of good in a sense. Because, like, yeah. it did it did give you a lot of time to, like, reflect on yourself. You know? Facts. Yeah. Literally, like, I've seen, like, right. I've seen people, like, completely change like their mindsets just during this because like right. you know what i mean like they have time to right i'm not even gonna cap like around this time last year i was a totally different person like i was so mm-hmm. all over the fucking place bro <laughs> i was oh my god mm-hmm. um, like emotional wise but like as a person i just feel like i wasn't in the best like headspace i was yeah. like bouncing in and out of depressive like episodes 24 fucking 7 and it was just like bro come on yeah i feel you like that happens all that shit's so annoying bro facts it does (laughs) and then like how do you so for your manifestations what do you do do you like script do you speak things in a minute um fuck into existence (laughs) like what do you do like hmm i would say like to be real i i would say speak things into existence because i'll wake up and i'll be like I'll think in my head, like, my normal thought will be like, oh, fuck, I gotta go to work, or I gotta do this, but then I'll switch, I'll just be like, wait, no, nah. like, um, I'm speaking into existence, like, that today's gonna be fine, or, like, I'm gonna do something good today, right. and just, like, I, I truly believe that for the rest of the day, and then it'll always happen, just because that's how it works, you know what right. I mean? Right, the laws of attraction are real as hell. Oh, yeah, my, my mom literally has been telling me about that shit since I was, like, five years old, and, like, now I know exactly what she was talking about because yeah. it's crazy. Yo. So you were speaking about being discouraged and how you got through that. And so, like, fuck. How do I put this into words? Hmm. How often do you feel discouraged? Um, it's It honestly ranges from, like, there's periods of time where it's, like, um, a daily thing. Right. And then there's also periods of time where it like never happens so i would say it's like on and off and then surprisingly well not surprisingly like (laughs) when i'm um when i'm in a good mood i'm in a good spirit you know what i mean like it's i make so much better music and like i work way harder so i'm just i always try to like force myself in that mindset even if i don't believe it at the time but then it ends up happening i do the same shit literally literally (laughs) (laughs) i say that shit too much Bro, I say this, bro, oh my god, same. Like, I be on the phone with people, and whenever I agree, I don't, I, I'll either say, like, same, but I usually say literally, and then they're like, bro, like, yeah. I say a lot of weird shit, but, yeah. Um, what do you think the best way to network is, and how do you network? I think I asked you this earlier, but not in, like, that exact way, so. Yeah, yeah, um. I would say, I already said how I network, right, I think. Uh, yeah, like word of mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, um, but then the best way to network, I would say, is um, I would say genuine interaction. Like, if you if you want to do, like, um, like a, a mass message type of thing, just, like, like, send out to a bunch of people, like, your message. And then when they respond, it's always good to, like, be a genuine person and not seem like a robot, so. Right. Facts. Literally. <laughs> and so how would you describe your music? Um, my music, like the genre kind of? Yeah, that, that too. But like, how would you describe your music like as a whole? As a whole, like, um, like as so an I would art say, form. like what? I said like as an art form, as a, as a genre, like oh, as a whole. Oh, okay. I you. Yeah. Um. Uh. Like. Okay. So, genre-wise, I would guess I would like. I literally, it's hard to answer that because like I make so much different types of music. Like, right. I'll literally. So I guess I would say my music can literally just be described as like um, music for people who don't have one specific taste. You know, like right. they like to like branch out, like. They like some new shit because I try to combine genres like as much as possible. Right. So yeah, I would just say that. That's awesome. Yeah. And so like, have you always been like this confident and this comfortable with your music? Because it takes a lot for you to be able 
to get up in the morning and make music that makes you happy. Because nowadays, yeah. people are focused on numbers. They get an audience. They they make a song that they wanted to make. And then they gain traction from that. And they continue to make music like that because they know it gets, they, it gets them numbers. They don't, they don't necessarily do things that make them happy anymore. Or they start doing what other people do. So, yeah, like, how long did it take you to get there? And, like, were you always like this? Oh, my God. Like, it took me literally, like, uh like five fucking years bro to like actually find a sound that i'm comfortable with and to like be confident about it like um because when i first first started music like by myself um i started like i didn't really know what i wanted to do like i i just started by actually like singing on i looked up like like sad beat or some shit like right. that <laughs> like i fucking sang and like it was fire like obviously i wasn't like doing some crazy shit because it was my first like independent song but um right. like i don't know i i started just thinking about emotions like i'd be like okay i want to combine this angry song with these sad lyrics or like because i fuck with like songs that like i've always found myself attracted to songs where they um they like contradict each other's genres like, like lyrics and beat wise like right. um like uh like people who be like like um screaming and then it's like something like hella happy bro literally like, there was this dude literally like yesterday i did music reviews and his name is sad ghost spooky ghost boy sad goose boy or some shit mm -hmm. and he's his music like has come so far since i've met him and like he literally did that what you just said like literally like he like it was like this happy literally literally it was like this happy ass beat it was like dee 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 and then like he like started off you know like his little flow or whatever and then like in the middle he yeah. just started fucking screaming and I was like ah I love this this is so fucking awesome oh my god and then I told him I was like hold on let me go in the fucking music review chat and find the song because I was so happy when I heard that because like he's came so far and it was awesome because it's like. His fucking vocals, like, they're obviously, like, emo, grunge, like, rock. And then the beat was, like, some digicore, cyberpunk, like, it was fucking awesome. I'm finna send it. I'm finna, That's like, fire. I'm gonna DM it to you. So yes. you can see. You should definitely check him out because he makes a variety of music as well. And I think y'all would probably get along. That, okay. But I sent you the link, like, I DM'd it to you. But yeah, facts. So, but so like, so what helped you like gain your confidence? Like, what did you do to gain your confidence? Um, I would say I definitely gained confidence. Um, when I started surrounding myself with the right people, because mm -hmm. um, beforehand, like before I met, you know, like my like boyfriend, lazy B roll, um. I was, like, I was kind of one of those people who didn't really have one friend group, but mm -hmm. I had, like, I had, like, a few people I hung out with, but I didn't really have, like, like, a group of people who, you know, like, we accepted you, time, right, and accepted you for, like, yeah. who you are, like, of course they accepted mm -hmm. you, but it's, like, it's kind of, like, it's not really you, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because that's how exactly. I was. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, like. Like, I don't know, this is literally something, I don't even think I've, like, told anyone this, bro, but, like, um, damn, that's crazy, I literally never told anyone this, <laughs> besides, like, my boyfriend, but, like, um, fucking, literally, before I met, um, those people, like, my real friends, I, I had friends who I still, like, care about, and I, like, like, we care about each other a lot and stuff, but, like, I didn't really feel like I could ever completely be myself, except, right. I mean, I have, I have my one friend, this girl, Maggie, who, like, um, we've, I've, I could always be myself with her and shit, but, like, as a, as a group of people, I didn't really, the people I would hang out with weren't people who I could, like, progress with, like, right. we just kind of, yeah, like, we just kind of sat around and didn't do really a lot, which was fine, right. but, like, um, it's, it's like, like you want to be around people who are evolving with you, like, mm -hmm. and people who are learning and changing with you, and it's, like, there's nothing wrong with those people who, like, you were yeah. hanging out with, it's just, like, when you're, like, a person like us, I feel like people like us, like, we develop and we, like, we just grow, like, pretty fast. Like, our vibrations yeah. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Literally. And it's just like when you're vibrating on that frequency and when you're like when your vibration is changing, when you're maturing like as a person all together, spiritually, whatever, like you want to be around like minded people. Mm-hmm. Cause like it's it's hard to it's hard to like evolve as a person when you're around right. people who just are so stagnant, you know? Right. Literally, I feel you. I completely feel you. Where do you want to perform? Like, where would be like your dream show, and what would your dream show be like? Um, uh, my dream show would probably. I honestly, I don't really have like a specific place to be real. Like, right. um, I only think of really like in like inside the venue or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. I would. I don't know. I don't. I feel like I don't really dream of, like, stadium shows and shit like that. I dream of shows that, like, I've been to. Like, I remember I went to a Tracy concert, like, two years ago or some shit. And it was, like, oh, my God. Like, I want to have shows like he he does because I just want to be able to, like, walk on stage and know that people in the crowd are, like, actually, like, oh, my God, bro. Like, my, I think my dream, like, for real, like, (laughs) would be hearing, like, mad people sing back my lyrics, bro. Literally. I think that would be, like. Right. I remember, like, when I was a little kid, I used to, like, run around my room, and I would, like, act like I was on stage and shit, like, singing. Same! Same. Facts! Like, I still do that shit. I'm not even gonna lie. Facts. Facts. So, like, how do you come up with your lyrics? Do you, like, write or do you freestyle? I write, because, like, um, I, I feel like I can freestyle sometimes, like, if I want to, but, um, I just, I don't know, I like writing because I like getting, like, I like doing analogies and, like, lyrics are actually, um, like, the most important thing to me when I make a song, Mm -hmm. um, because I, I personally listen to lyrics very, like, in-depth and shit, so I like to, you know, do that for other people, so Mm -hmm. I definitely write just because, I don't know, like, freestyling is, like, fire, and, like, it's definitely a talent. Right, but but you don't feel feel it. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, you can definitely, like, of course there's people who can freestyle and it's like, you still gonna feel them. But like, when somebody takes mm-hmm. their time and they write their lyrics down and they think about it, and you, you feel it on a different level. Like, it feels different. Mm-hmm. So I definitely understand yes. that. And then as far as okay. beat selection, how do you go about that? As far as what? Beat selection. Oh, um, uh, usually I feel like um when people send me beats i always listen to them like literally always listen to them and if if it, i think i try to go for a certain sound for myself so if it fits my sound and i think i could do something cool on it then i will just use it but then when i'm like independently finding beats like on track train or youtube or whatever um i'll usually look from stuff that's more melodic like like ethereal kind of like right. angelic you know so because right. i like singing and I'm definitely more of a singer than I am a rapper, so right. it's better. I feel you. So, like, mm-hmm. me personally, like, whenever I, like, get ready to write a song, this is, like, weird. But it's, like, okay, sometimes you'll hear a beat and it's, like, okay, let me try. But then there's, like, sometimes where you hear a song and it's, like, you get this feeling and you start going. Do you mm-hmm. do that? Yeah, definitely, like, yeah. Because... I've definitely made songs with beats just to, like, make a song with the beat, you know? But, like, right. there's there's some beats that, like, it don't, they almost call to me. Like, right. I just, like, I just really want to use them, you know? Literally. And so it's, like, how often does that happen? Because for me, it's, like, less than more. So. Honestly, bro, like, like it's kind of rare, but also not really just because I listen to so many beats, like, I would say, like, one in every, like, 50 beats I listen to hit, hits me that way. Like, Same. Or, like, a lot of times, like, there's this one producer I work with called Life Points, um, and every time he sends me a beat, I just, like, I get inspired. And he's not even, like, some huge-ass producer. He's literally just, like, a kid who's, like, fire, you know what I mean? Like, and our sounds just match. Right. I fuck with that. Right. And I feel like those would be the most inspirational person people, like, just the motherfuckers who just, like, just, like, people who just act like regular people, bro. Like, Facts. right, because it's, like, they're doing what they want to do, and that's inspirational as fuck to see. Like, I just, I like seeing shit like that. It makes yeah. me happy because it's, like, that do you. Yeah, literally. So, a lot of artists nowadays, I feel, I said something, like, I said something similar to this earlier, but I didn't, like, touch too much on it. But so, 
a lot of artists nowadays, they're not necessarily creating music for themselves. They're creating music for the people around them. And although, of course, like your music is like art is for other people to observe and for other people to enjoy, it's really supposed to be for you. How do you mm-hmm. feel about that? Like, how do you feel about people doing that? Um, um, <laughs> let me think for a second. Uh, oh my god, I'm mad high right now. Okay, <laughs> so, okay, okay. So, <laughs> um, let me just make sure I got this question right. So, right. you're asking, you're asking, because some people do it for other people, how right. do I inspire to do it for myself? Right, basically. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> I was like, wait, I'm about to sound like a clown and respond like <laughs> <laughs> No, but, okay. Um, I guess what inspires me to be myself, for real, is literally, like, oh my god, literally just the fact that, like, I know when I listen to artists, I look for people who are different, you know, like, personally, um, I don't really like music that, like, is a replica of, like, other songs, right. and then... So I look specifically for artists who make completely, like, like new shit, like, new shit I haven't heard. So then I know that since I get that feeling, I feel like if um, if I make my music more individual or whatever, people will listen to it and they'll have the same feeling I have about my favorite artists. Right. That's awesome. That's fucking cool as hell. That's a cool-ass <laughs> response, honestly speaking. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. That's fucking awesome. And so, like, what would your advice to, let's say, like, somebody's, like, watching and they're, like, struggling with that. Because not everybody does that shit on purpose. Some people just do it because they don't know what else to do. What would your advice to them be? Um, I would say, like, look at uh, whoever you listen to. Like, look at them. Like, I feel like a lot of people drive inspiration from artists like Peep and, like, um, like, X and, like, just um people who started their own genre like a lot of people look up to people who inspire their own genre so if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and it's not taking off try to just trust the the process and like trust the universe like there's literally nothing that can go wrong if you change your process other than evolving as a person and an artist right right like bro i was thinking this shit earlier i'm like for the longest, like, I was rushing myself. I felt like whatever the fuck was meant for me was going to fucking run away from me. But I'm like, no, bro, if it's your destiny, it's waiting for you. It's not going uh-huh. anywhere. It's there for you. So it's uh-huh. like, take your time and learn yourself, observe yourself, and, like, do what's best for you. Facts, literally. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, like, when you're not making music, what are you doing other than working in school? What other things do I do? Yeah, other than school and work. Um, fuck. Literally, literally all I do is school, music, and work, bro. Like, literally. <laughs> I play, I mean, I'd be fucking with Animal Crossing, though. I'd be higher at that. That's hard. But. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've never played I, it. I, what you said? I said I've never played it. Damn, you, sh- you should. Like, I it, want it to so bad. Bro, I literally blew my whole fucking, like, check one one week on um, Animal Crossing and a Switch. And I was, like, I was, like, praying. I was, like, I better not regret that shit because, like, money <laughs> is very precious. Like, Facts. Like, that was literally rent, bro. But, like, I... I, I feel you. Fucking, I, I don't know. I don't regret it, bro, at all. Because, like, I, I'd be fucking Animal Crossing up, bro. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> we. That's how I be because I be like that with other games. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel you. That's funny as hell. That's literally all I do, though, bro. Like, I can't lie, you know? (laughs) That's funny as hell. I mean, editing, too, but... Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, like, what's your editing process like? Um, literally, bro, like, I've been... Since I just started this shit, I've had the same process, like, all throughout. So, um, I, uh, I use iMovie, which is, like everyone knows what iMovie is so I'm not about to explain it but (laughs) but um I use iMovie because literally because I have a Mac and I can't afford like some fancy shit but I wish I could but um so I do that and then um for my personal music videos um I record like I'll sing or lip sync like my song all the way through 
like multiple times in multiple different areas and then I'll cut the clips obviously like to match up to my voice and then it just it ends up looking fire because it cuts from scene to scene and then I like to add like effects that like like I like to add effects that look DIY just because it is DIY like I'm not trying to be all professional when it's not you know right. like, and like my think I think you kind of like figure that out by now like my energy isn't really like like I try to I try to put out like honest work right you know I mean? shit like, that's authentic mm-hmm. right. like literally because I'm not that a like I'm not like I literally wish I could go pay someone to edit a video for me but I just can't but right. like honestly it's like a blessing at the same time because then i learned to myself like it's not all about fancy editing and shit like that you know right. literally that's fucking awesome so like what do you do where do you draw inspiration from like editing wise like you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. like well like like you bro like i'd be watching mad music videos so right. i i feel like um I'll, like, there's some times where I watch music videos, and I'm like, oh, I want to do that, and then I do it, you know what I mean? Right. Literally, there's multiple people, like, my favorite artists, like, um, I definitely watch, I've literally watched, like, all of my favorite artists' music videos, and, like, it's not like I'm trying to copy them, but it's more like, I look at their shit, and it inspires me as fuck, you know, like. Right, because it's like, oh, I like this a lot, they did awesome, but it's like, I want to do it with myself now. I want to do it my way. I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Literally. And then also, like, um, do you have, like, a favorite? I know, like, it's, like, some, it's, like, you know, like, fuck, 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 how do I put it in words? It's, like, (laughs) there's, like, editors and shit that, like, you know by name. And then there's just, like, um, styles that you like. Like, for example, like, I like data moshing, like, a lot, like, Whenever I see, like, videos like Yammer Getting High, because that's the only video I know that everybody knows when I say data moshing, because yeah. nobody knows what the fuck data moshing is, usually. But fucking data moshing, bro. And then I love fucking, like, Lyrical Lemonade. I love um, yep. their style. And then this dude, Mosh Pit, he's, like, pretty new, but I fucking... Well, he's not new, but he's, like, starting to pop off more. And yeah. I fucking love his style. Like, every time I... A lot of the artists that I listen to as, like, um, like have been listening to as of recently, like, he's been doing their videos. And he recently did, I think, he, fuck, I think he did a video for, like, David Shoddy recently, too, which was pretty fucking cool. And it's just, like, it's, it's, like, for everybody, it's different as fuck. And it's, like, he literally takes you, like, out of your world and puts you, like, in their world. And it's fucking awesome, bro. And it's, like, the videos yeah. make no sense sometimes, but they're awesome. <laughs> But that's why they're fine. Right? Literally. And then, you know, like, the little anime videos? I like shit like that, too. Those are cool. Yeah, yeah, facts. Like, yeah. literally, those videos, like, got me, like, aw. Because, like, that's when I first started listening to, like, a lot of music. Like, right. well, that's actually not even true. I don't know why I said that. Like, I, <laughs> like that's when I started listening to, like, a lot of, vi- like, watch a lot of videos. Though. Right. Like, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, yeah, like, I could add... Like, you could literally add any song to, like, a cute anime video, and it would look so fine. Right. Um, literally. <laughs> and then, like, um, have you been seeing, like, uh, fucking Blade. Blade, he has one. And it's, like, they have, like, the little chibi characters, like, the little 3D, like, Animal Crossing-looking yes, characters. Bro. And it's, yes, Blade I love those. Favorite art. I love those. Oh Blade is fucking fire, bro. Literally, he was my number one fucking, um, on Spotify, bro. Swear. <laughs> Bro, I remember, like, when I first found out about Blade, it was, I think, what? He was on a song with Young Lean, and I was like, ooh, like, I remember the first time I heard him, I was like, he sounds kind of weird, but I was like, I like it, and then I kept listening, I was like, this nigga is hard, like, this nigga is fucking hard, like, he's awesome. Facts, and it's like, a lot of people, I feel like, a lot of people, like, when they first hear him, they probably just, like, ignore it, and it, like, it goes over their head, and so, like, they miss out. But it's, like, Fox. when you listen, you're, like, damn, this nigga is clever yeah. as fuck. <laughs> people, people are, like, oh, too much auto-tune or some shit. Right. And that's another thing. Like, people always, like, speak so negatively of, like, shit, like, auto-tune and stuff like that. And I'm just, like, bro, like, you're really letting a little bit of auto-tune, like, mm-hmm. 
fuck up your experience like and i'm like bro like that's people's style like you can't tell somebody like what not to do i feel like the only thing i ever say is like hey like work on your mixing but even then it's like for example like people like x came out the cut and he was making shit sound distorted on purpose and it sounded fast so it's like even with that it's like there's no right or wrong way to do it all i i would really my advice to everybody is just like your energy just be Mm -hmm. authentic literally literally and it's like, bro, if you can't do that, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yes. And, like, the funny thing is half these people, like, who say, like, they don't fuck the auto-tune or whatever, literally all their favorite artists use auto-tune. They just literally. don't know it. Like, <laughs> literally. Wow. Fact. But so, like, what's your job like working at your job? Like, what do you do when you're there? Like, are you thinking about music and shit while you're at your job? Um, yeah, I work, um. I work at Target and Savers, which is, like, a thrift store. Ooh. Um, it's, like, I've been working at Savers for hella fucking long, like, two years. And, like, Swear. um, I just have two jobs now because um, I want to save up, like, bank, like money so mm-hmm. I can move to New York. Right. Um, but fucking, like, what I do there, I literally just work retail. So what I do there is, like, um, I put shit, like, out on the floor. I clean all that basic shit. Right. Like. I definitely, literally, it's so funny, because, like, I'll literally be, like, in the break room on my breaks, like, writing music, bro, because, like, that shit, like, I feel like work almost motivates me, because I hate it so much. Literally, I know exactly what you're saying. Literally, literally like, I'm like, okay, fuck this, I'm not trying to do this my whole life, Facts. so I'm gonna go write a song, the fuck? Facts. I know exactly what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So, like, do you have any, like, crazy stories about, like, your job? Because I know, like, r- r- fuck, damn, that stutter was bad as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I know, like, working in, like, retail and shit, you see some, like, crazy ass shit, especially oh. as of, like, recently. So, like, do you uh, want to share some stories? Oh, my God, girl. I, oh, my <laughs> God. Like, like, I literally have, like, hours worth but I only work at I'll condense it. I'll condense it. I'll, I'll tell you, like. I'll tell you a story from um, Savers and one from Target. How about that? Bet. <laughs> so fucking Savers, I literally have so many fucking stories. I people bet. There, like, like, oh, people there are fucking crazy, but like, that's why I love <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> like y'all keep me entertained, bro. Like, Facts. Oh my god. But one story I always think about is like, um, apparently our bathroom or whatever, it's hella nasty, bro. Like, it's it's not a nice bathroom, but, like, bro, you're at a thrift store, like, shut the fuck up. Like, right. it's not, you know what I mean? Like, I so, you. like, um, <laughs> like, this one lady looks like a whole Karen, bro. Like, had, like, haircut and everything, bro. Like, looks like week. a Karen. Fucking came to the front or whatever, and she told my manager, who was, like, this other, like, literal 20-year-old girl or whatever, like, she was, like, your bathrooms are a disgrace and she was like oh Oh. i'm sorry ma'am like i'll go i'll go clean that you know like just trying to be nice whatever they are fucking gross like (laughs) and then the lady was like like getting all in her face and she was like yeah if you don't clean that i'm calling hr on you and like her whole like five-year-old son was right next to her bro and it was (laughs) (laughs) i'm like what the fuck (laughs) <laughs> what are you doing this motherfucker was like staring at us like bruh like i'm sorry oh my god uh, that's fucking hilarious <laughs> like oh. like why the fuck was she so mad it's it's not that Literally. serious <laughs> it's a bathroom like the, it's like it's like it's one thing to like complain about them because like i i get it people are weird like they don't like shit and they'll complain or whatever like right. i can't relate to that but i <laughs> Like, I get it, right. but it's just the fact that, like, she was literally seemed like she, we, like, killed her family or something. Like, she was right. so upset. I it never understood people like that. That's why I can't fucking work in retail, because, like, I'll pop mm-hmm. the fuck off. Like, I don't like shit mm-hmm. like that. Like, you're not about to... Mm-mm. I don't have the patience for that. I never have had the patience for shit like that. I can't do it. That's funny as hell, right. though. Did yeah, she ever come back? Nah, literally No. What? I was like that. <laughs> That's funny as hell because it's like she did all that just to not come back. <laughs> exactly. Like what the hell? I hate, I hate bitches. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> what about Target though? What what be happening at Target? Shit. Okay, so I only started working there after Corona, so right. every store I have from there is like mask shit, bro. Like right. Fucking literally this um. 
this like old like wet like fat guy and um he was just like walking through the store with no mask or whatever which honestly bro i'm used to just because like no one be wearing that like mask sometimes it's mad annoying but this like old fucking like guy was just walking through the store and he was literally screaming at the top of his lungs and he was like he was like i'm not putting on no mask the, the Chinese survived the Black Plague, you know. Oh, like, oh, oh my huh? god! <laughs> oh my god! That's so fucking bad. embarrassing. Like, what do you gain from doing? It's like he came there just to be problematic. Facts. Right. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's funny as hell. Sorry, I just got distracted real quick, but. Oh, you're I, good. I, I it's fine. <laughs> I completely understand. I do the same shit. <laughs> But yeah, that's fucking funny. What type of music do you want to make in the future? Like, what type of music do you see yourself making in the future? Um, I would say, like I told you before, the whole genre mix thing. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I want to make my own genre. Like, I want to be, like, I look at, like, Peep. And, like, mm-hmm. people will be like, oh, he created, like, emo rap. Or, mm-hmm. well, like, he didn't necessarily create it himself. But, like, he popularized it. Mm-hmm. And, like, um... So I want people to be able to be like, oh, like, Nine Lives made, like, this genre. Like, I don't know specifically what genre I would call it, but um, I just want to be able to, like, kind of create my own sounds, like, right. for real. I feel that. I feel that 100%. And so, like, how do you think you've evolved as an artist? Like, what type of music were you making before you got to your style right oh. now? Um, I was making, like, um... Uh, kind of like sad, like sad boy music a little bit. Like mm-hmm. I kind of just like I would sing to beats and like there would be sad lyrics and all that shit. And like that was fire. But I think I've definitely progressed because now I make like um kind of more hype shit or I'll make angry shit. Mm-hmm. I still make sad shit sometimes, but only when I'm feeling sad. You know, like right. And then also like so. Of course, like, your music back then, you said it was, like, sad boy music. And, of course, it was expressing, like, emotions. But I feel like now, like, observing you, I feel like you have, like, a range of emotions that you can express through your music. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So, like, what does that feel like being able to do that? Because, it's like, for some people, it's like, you know, they get stuck. They only know one genre or they only know how to make one genre. So, like, what's it like yeah. being able to do what you want to do? I think um, it's nice because, like, the only reason I really, I, I really only credit, like, my being able to do the diversity is because I listen to so much music. Mm-hmm. So, I would say my advice for people would definitely be, like, listen to music that, like, turns you off at first. But then if you listen to more of it, you start to fuck with it. Because, like, mm. you, you never really know, like, what's your true, like, taste, you know? Like, you have to right. listen around. And I promise you, those be the best fucking artists. A year from now today, where do you want to be in your career? Um, like a year from now, mm-hmm. um, I guess I want to be able to perform a lot more, hopefully. And like, I want to be um, traveling more and just like doing more shows and like shit in like different parts of the country and shit, you know? Right. Well, I hope you get there. I'm pretty sure you will. I can't wait to see it. I'm really excited (laughs) for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Like, before you go, do you have anybody that you want to, like, shout out? Um, definitely. Like, I want to shout out Lazy and B-Roll and Easy, my boyfriend. And, um, uh, mm, Rip Josh. Uh, (laughs) um, and, yeah, that's about it, I guess. 